Joined now by Nick Delatory of Gators Online. And Nick, this was pretty much the worst case scenario that we uh, we laid out for Florida. Losing to Arkansas and now mm -hmm. needing a win against one of at LSU, at Missouri, or Florida State at home to become bowl eligible. Yeah, well, they played really well on the road uh, over Billy Napier's 22 games. So you probably feel good about LSU or Missouri. Um, and then <laughs> and then there's a playoff team coming in. So, yeah, it it's tough for me to say, you know, not say that a bowl game is important because, you know, I'm, I'm a proponent of, listen, when, when it's June, I would love for there to be some bowl games going on. But I get that fans won't get excited for the Duke's Mayo Bowl. Please don't come for us. That's a social I don't media think team. They, you don't want to be on the wrong side. I don't think they rate the Duke's Mayo Bowl at 6-6. Six and six. <laughs> So I think we're talking Birmingham. We're talking Shreveport. Mm. You know. Actually, I can't remember. But, if the, I don't even remember if the Independence Bowl is an SEC bowl anymore. So I think they're not. But – but I can't sit here and tell you that, like, okay, it's not important when I'm also telling you all season long, hey, Florida's really young. They need practice. They need time. Mm -hmm. Florida needs bowl practices last year because you were in such a bad bowl game. You didn't even get a chance to use all 15 practices. But you have a five-star quarterback in DJ Lagway that will be able to enroll early in practice. You have a bunch of Eugene Wilson, Jordan Castell, a bunch of freshmen, sophomores who could use the practice. Uh, this was your opportunity to secure bowl eligibility and get those games. Now, Florida will not be and should not be uh, favored to win any of their next three games. So you had an interesting question to Billy Napier yesterday because special teams, obviously a huge part of the loss to Arkansas. Uh, multiple times, 10 guys lining up on, on field goal block again. Uh, the field goal team running onto the field, causing an illegal substitution penalty, uh, a missed field goal at the end of regulation that would have won the game, a missed extra point that would have probably caused them to win the game had they made it. And here's what you asked Billy Napier about special teams and his answer. Uh, Billy, the special teams unit has pretty much consistently had issues, whether it's been procedural or otherwise. What can you do this late in the season to help them or fix that? And at the end of the season, do you have to look at changing the operation completely there? Well, um, specifically, what are you talking about? For a field goal block, uh, the uh, bad snap, and then the procedural penalty uh, running the guys on. Then they've had issues pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, we had a few young people today that had opportunities. That's what I would say, you know. Um, we also had some great punt returns today. We had some great kickoff returns today. Uh, we covered kicks and punts well today. Um, you know, I think it's important here. And one of the things that I respect about our team, um, there's a lot of, blame to be spread out, you know, and in this game in particular, I think we're going to look back at all parts of our team. Um, every single thing that we do gets evaluated, right? When we make mistakes that have nothing to do with the opponent, you know, those are the things that we specifically try to correct, right? So there's no question what you're talking about is part of our process and ultimately it comes down to doing the, the best you can do for the players. Right. We have a responsibility to do the best we can do for the players. So, the, you know, there are things on offense and defense that we can do well uh, today as well. You know, so it's all under evaluation. Um, and I think in particular for me, things that have nothing to do with the opponent, those are the things that you need to get fixed. If this were an episode of Seinfeld, that would be the big word salad, Nick. Because he keeps talking about stuff that has nothing to do with the opponent, and that's what you need to fix. That's what you were asking. You were asking, why haven't you fixed this yet? And they haven't. Yeah, yeah he caught me off guard uh, with, you know, what specifically? And I was like, today or the entire season? Well, How uh, the, much the, time the do list, we have? Yeah, the list you gave was pretty, pretty thorough. And then you're like... Well, would you like me to go back through the other games? Yeah, I was just like, I can come, I can come better prepared on Monday. Um, you know you have to help the players is hiring an on-field coach helping the players when you're saying 
and I don't think this was Billy Neighbors' intention, but when you're saying we had a player think he heard a word and that signaled him to run on the field and they ran on the field. Well, then my question follow up to that would be the play before you had a timeout and then you ran. So who's your coach for special teams to be in the offensive huddle to say, Hey, if we get a first down, the clock stops. And then this is what what we're going to do. You don't have a coach. You have a graduate assistant and an analyst who can't, by the letter of the law, coach on the yeah. Field. I was gonna say, can so, I can I add, can I make a cynical point here? Yeah. The cynical part of me says the whole pl- that that there's a player in charge of that signal and and all that. Well, you have to say that because you can't say there's an analyst in charge of it. Yes. Um, but it, it's to put the players in the best position. Are you doing that? We're we're and listen, you should have good punt coverage. You should have good kick coverage. Right. You should also have 11 people on the field goal block team. That would help. Every time. <laughs> that would help. What about 11 different jersey numbers on the field at the same time? They seem to have gotten that part. It, I think. It, it, well, I think. <laughs> most peewee teams do as well. Um, it was perplexing to me, his response of, you know, clutching my pearls whatever do you mean special teams problems so well and and that's I, that's the issue he seems to have he seems to have lost the uh the PR battle here which like if you're not winning you're going to lose the PR battle but at a certain point you just got to be like <laughs> our young players are are playing yeah. pretty well like Eugene Wilson was great yesterday mm-hmm. but they they seem to not understand that they're they're not inspiring any confidence, but I, I am wondering what can he say? Cause that that's part of, part of what mm-hmm. I think is, is the issue is he can't come out and say, I'm going to hire an offensive coordinator to call the plays next year. I'm going to hire a special teams mm-hmm. coach. We're probably not going to have two offensive line coaches. He can't say any of that right now. Yeah. Um, you can say, yes, we are evaluating it. We think it's been a rough patch and that kind of leads you down the direction. We think this has been a weakness and we will evaluate that. Yeah. You, you're not saying, Hey, we're firing people. Heads are rolling, but you're saying, yes, I acknowledge what the fans, it lets, it lets the fans know, Hey, we hear you. We also agree with you and we will make those changes. Mm-hmm. And instead, I think, you know, if, if I'm the PR, if I'm Billy's PR guy, um, we're leaving that press conference and I'm saying, Hey man, we, we did not do well there. We talked about what, what we learned from having people speak to us in practice after losing to a team that was two and six. That's not mm-hmm. what people wanted to hear at that moment, whether it's true or not. And I think it is true. You hope that they learned something from that, but I'm not talking about that at a podium to a group of angry fans yeah. minutes after losing a game. So I don't think it was a a great press conference in terms of answers. Um, He doesn't really give great press conferences, but like you said, it doesn't matter if you're winning games. They're just not winning games. 11 and 11 after 22. um, It's just not cutting it. So he can't say, and and like you said, he won't say I'm firing myself as play caller and we'll figure it out. But those are moves that you have to make and you have to be critical after the, after the season. I was reading your message board at Gators Online, and I will say it seems like the fan base is 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 pretty understanding of the situation because there's not a lot of just fire Billy stuff out there because they realistically can't. So $32 million buyout, 50% of it due up front. So unless you've got $16 million in cash laying around, and then you've got the added part of at what point do you stop just running on the treadmill of Fire the coach, fire the coach, fire the coach, fire the coach. Well, firing him this year would be super cool because then you'd be paying Dan Mullen and Billy and your new coach. So you'd be paying three coaches at the same time, two of them not to coach your team. I don't think Billy is in danger of being fired. Um, And and I think credit to our message board, we've been championing all year, whether Billy liked my question or not, we've been championing all year. The best players on this team have been brought in by this coaching staff. Mm -hmm. time and it's going to you're going to have to be patient there's going to be growing pains and like i said on the show uh the last time i was here knowing that there's growing pains doesn't make the growing pains feel good real time um and and i don't think losing to arkansas uh is one of the expected growing pains no uh, fans were ready for no an arkansas team that that just lost 7-3 to mississippi state now granted 
they made an offensive coordinator change mm -hmm. and it worked out better for them. But right. This, this was the one they were supposed to win. This is the one we kind of circled as if they lose this one, uh Oh, that's a big problem. And there, there are some excuses, which people will call them as a defensive coordinator looking for tendencies and patterns. Kenny Guyton had never called plays, had never right. ran an offense. There are no tendencies. There are no patterns. I said before the game, you're going to have to adjust in game, maybe even yeah. come out with just a base defense and have to adjust and figure things out. They did not. Arkansas well, I, had 481 I, I like, yards. If, if you're looking for a pattern from the guy who doesn't have a history, perhaps he'll try to do what his players do best. Hmm. And that's kind of what he did. He's like, oh, KJ Jefferson is very big <laughs> and runs fast. Maybe I'll let him run the ball. Yeah, and I guess you could have gone back to Bryles, and, and he coached under Bryles. What did Arkansas's offense look like under mm -hmm. that? Um, to me, you know, it was like Herman Boone and Remember the Titans. It was like, hey, we've got six plays. We're just going to run them, give them time. They work like Novocaine. And it was like, hey, we have a gigantic quarterback who's big, strong, and fast. Let's run him. Oh, and by the way, we get an All-American level running back yes that that, uh, that rocket sanders return was was the other thing and then florida had injuries on the d line like mm -hmm. the, the perfect storm was was yeah. brewing you could feel it and but it, it it doesn't make it any less frustrating but i i just wonder you know what what can florida do what can billy napier and company do these next few weeks because they're going to lsu now they might mm -hmm. not they might not see Jaden daniels we we don't if, know about if that doug if doug nussmeyer's son Oh boy. Beats the Florida Gators. This. Oh boy. If Doug Nussmeyer's son oh beats the Florida Gators, it might break the fan base. You oh, might you yeah. might actually hope for Jaden Daniels to play. Hadn't <laughs> thought about that. Garrett Nussmeyer, son of former offensive coordinator at Florida, Doug Nussmeyer under Jim McElwain. Wow. Boy. The the psychic hits just keep coming. There's never never a dull moment covering the Florida Gators, Andy. Nick, we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.